This episode of Speakers of Heidland is made possible by our generous patrons, like Omage Cat Comet, Saray Cypher, Hans Grenade, Anakin Terrace, Bob CZ, Faris Gentoru, Cletus Oreo, Luke Leonitrell, Sapa Chakwatol, Courtney, Circuit Barakil, Casey Schaefer, Lily Black, Chayton, Chesha Saltiri, Erisu Yamakawa, Sisirifu Lilirifu, Daimos, Nina Grimstarter, Asuta Starbreeze, Quick Levin, Sayori Snowfall, Yuana Nitsa, Miscellaneous Cargo, Stella Bell, Boogie Bear, Remy Asalia, Ceres, Icy Lee, Lyria Rain, CNG Lipscomb, Dalamud Papoto, Kaisa Regina, Pamela Isley, Umbral Wind, Naive Arino, Celeste Rasgris, Alenriel Maximus, Edwin, and Dead Shield. Support the show and become a patron today at patreon.com slash speakersxiv. Thank you. This is Speakers of Life. Good evening, Aeorsians. Welcome to Speakers of Fightland. I'm wearing a Christmas sweater. That's right. Uh, this is episode 175 of Speakers of Fightland, the last one of 2019. I'm Lukeel Bravestone, and I'm joined today by Rollo Des, Georgi Wiston, and Mel of Anadar. Hello. Happy, it's Happy not, Christmas. Ha Why well, do you have Pegos in the background? The fuck? It's, it's snowy. Christmas it's Christmassy, okay? This is... No. It's... Let's restart. The... I'm not... <laughs> I'm leaving. Tis the season. Uh, yeah, wait, for this Pagos. is not Pagos. This is... This is Pyrus. Pyrus. This Whatever. Is Pyrus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also Pyrus. bad. Mm. Mm. Welcome to Speakers of Idol episode 175, the last episode of 2019. Mm. It is December the 21st, 2019. <laughs> um, our main topics today will be we'll be covering a Soken interview. Uh, those are rare, so we'll we'll be covering that. Uh, we'll talk about Starlight. We'll obviously also be talking about Blue Mage. I just realized I don't think we have that in the show notes. Um, and we'll, we'll be I reading. I thought we were just going to talk about that and what we've done in the last four, well, last week. Oh, I thought we were going to review it a little bit. We didn't really talk about what we're going to do with Blue Mage in this okay. show. Um, stay tuned for the post show. There's a question from the syndicate, and we will continue the sort of the the field city and field theme uh, tournament bracket thing. Uh, mm -hmm. So stay tuned for that as well. Right, what have we done in fourteen this week? Um, should we include Blue Mage here, or should we save it for recent events? We may, must make that decision right now. I'm making the decision. It'll be part of recent events, so you can okay. talk about <laughs> what you've done, bully mage wise. What else have you done this patch? Well, you can talk about the PvP thing, if you've done that this week. Yes. Uh, who, who wants to start? I, Roll I got, you start. did some stuff. Mm -hmm. I got Gunbreaker to 80, finally. Hey! Nice. Yeah. Danger Zone is very fun. I thought it was just going to be like, oh, it's just more potency or whatever. Yeah. But I don't know. You summon, like, the Light of God, apparently. <laughs> you use it, and it looks pretty cool. Uh-huh. Um, very enjoyable tank. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Also did more of the PvP. Uh, I actually really like it. <laughs> I've, I've been playing it semi-frequently. The music's just so good too, and like the rounds just go by so quick. Yeah, and it feels nice. Yeah, like I could yeah. actually probably get them out from it. Mm -hmm. Like I can see myself doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna try. Yeah, and I suck at PvP. <laughs> <laughs> but what I like about it is that you can be your team can be like far behind, but there's still yeah. hope. There's still a chance to turn yeah. it around. You can yeah. make a comeback. Come back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that much. Yeah, uh, Georgi. What do you? You took everything away from me that I've done this week. <laughs> well, you can say you've done it too and give yeah. your own take. Yeah, you can give your own take. Did you also get Gunbreaker to eighty? That's a very no. Funny I'm talking what Le about what Lakeel did about Blue Mage. I haven't done anything okay. else this week. <laughs> you haven't done anything about Blue Mage. We'll save it then. We'll yes. talk about it after this. Uh, Melod, have, have you done anything? Because you um, haven't done I, a lot of Blue Mage this week. I haven't done much Blue Mage. I've got my Paladin to eighty today. Mm. Um, 
I that's about all I've really done. Uh, you like Paladin A? I need to finish the last two job quests before I can get my nice gear and, and set myself up because I'm still wearing that level seventy gear, I think. Oh okay. Um but it I've enjoyed I've enjoyed it so far. It has a lot of cool skills. Mm-hmm. I like um the sword of you know, whatever that ability is called, the one that uses sword oath. That mm-hmm. actually is cool. Um yeah, it's cool. I like it. Mm-hmm. So it's a very nice tank, like what they did with it in Shadowbringers. Yeah. Yeah. I've not done much else though. Okay. Well, I haven't done much either, so uh, let's just jump into uh, recent events. Oh, well, there would have... Mm, there would have been an... Uh, some, hmm. <laughs> did you hear that chat? Did, did, was there any audio there? I don't think there was. Um, Windows 10, everyone. Windows we 10. I believe there oh, was an there. update recently. Let's do that again. Recent events. Oh. Okay, Uh, um, Ah. (laughs) let's talk, before we talk about everything else, let's talk about Blue Mage then. Uh, Blue Mage was released, uh, Mm -hmm. or the updates to Blue Mage was released this week, Uh still, right? Um, Patch 5.18, was that this week or last week? week? Okay. No, it was last week, because remember, we were going to talk about last week, but none of us had anything to say about it. True, okay, that's why we're talking about it now. Um, So... Uh, three out of four here have at least level 60. Um, it's easy mm-hmm. to get to 60. I guess we can talk, mention that. It's very easy to level, but it was it was easy yes. to level to 50 as well, to be fair. Mm-hmm. This would felt even faster to me for some reason. Like, you, all you need to do is go to, like, Paz's levels. Law. And, and, it definitely was easier. Yeah. <laughs> it's like 40 less levels to go through. Yeah. Um... If you go to Aziz Law, don't fight the level 60s on top of no. the main ship because the game doesn't count them for your bonus no you gotta go for the 59s yes mm-hmm. um what do we want to what's worth mentioning so how far are you uh Ro- i think rollo is the furthest or is georgi who's the no, furthest? Uh, georgi is you just finished the no, quest i just yeah i finished the storyline it's mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think it's as interesting overall as the storyline from um, the 1 to 50 mm. quest line. Definitely, yeah. Uh, True. Also, I think the final uh, Masked Carnival fight is quite a bit easier than the final one from the before as well. Mm-hmm. It's still good. Yeah. But I, I feel like there's less mechanics overall. Mm-hmm. I like the cutscenes oh. from the story, though. Like seeing, yeah, uh, Martin. Is that how you'd say his name? Just Martin, right? I think yeah. so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's seeing him like use the blue mage skills mm-hmm. against the, the man, and mm-hmm. let's not it's, spoil it, it too it much. But yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. Mm. He has defeated Sophia. He has, um, <laughs> he which makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He did the simulation? I don't know. Mm, they try. Yeah, well, do the simulation. The story kind of touches on a, how, like, how they get certain opponents, but they don't really touch on that part of the story, do they? Like how they get, no. they kill the primals to get the sk- skills. They don't talk specifically about that. They talk. He does say that he went to Ishgard mm-hmm. to get new skills, mm-hmm. but there are certain skills that don't make sense for him yeah. to have. Yeah, <laughs> he just saw us doing. I don't know. He was. He was there. Yes, Martin was uh, there. Martin was there. And Sophia just in the background. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't see him. Um, well, he threw out like a. <laughs> he he did like a water can. No, he did a, a yeah a water can. Yeah, uh, or, a, or uh, a fish toss or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how did you feel about like getting s- spells? I felt like it was easier than it was before, but then again, I don't know. Is it? It feels, it feels way easier. easier. Yeah. 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 Um, like some, um, there's some that's a li- little annoying. I don't know. I feel like we talked about this as well. There's the level five death thing for instance <laughs> it's funny it's funny but it's <laughs> annoying um to get it's pretty easy to get you just need to outrange it you need to yeah. make sure that it's not tethered yeah. to anyone but then you and have to wait for it to casting. cast it 
which but well, it's not very long and you just uh, need to make sure you don't stand in it but like then you get in your own head and you go like wait is this how you do it should i should I, should I kill it should i like get it down to low health maybe um because some you have to right there's some enemies that need to yeah. have their hp decreased to a certain yes point. some of yeah. them are like which i think is kind of cool too where it's like hey you have to be in this range for the skill to happen yeah or you have to break light of sight yeah or you have to fulfill yeah. some other kind of weird requirement and i think it's yeah think it's yeah yeah warmer is with excavation was another annoying one that you need another Oh yeah, enemy nearby. Yeah, mm. yeah. That's on low HP for them to start casting it since it's a heal spell. Yeah, they're usually tethered with other things though, so it kind of just happens anyway, right? Mm. Um, yeah. So, what do you what do you think overall about this update to Blue Mage? Is it worth uh, doing at, now again? At first, I thought it was more of the same in a bad way, and I was very down on. It. But then, actually doing it more and going through it. And seeing mm -hmm. all like you know, doing all the synced raids and all that stuff, and ethereal mimicry too, which lets you just become whatever yeah. role, yeah, is super cool. Mm -hmm. It's it's still not what I would want exactly, like you know, since it was being advertised as you know, the solo job or something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. it's very much not that, and now even more so mm -hmm. with yeah. like the blue mage log. Uh -huh. But have what you... we have is still cool. Have you done any of the entries in the Blue Mage log yet? I did some like some dungeons, and that was about it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I just, I just want to try it out. Any of them yet? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Uh, that's it. Let's. I guess we can move on. Um, there's. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, we didn't. We haven't even talked about the. This. There's a lot of stuff missing from the show notes. <laughs> we haven't talked about Starlight. We have to talk about Starlight as well. The oh, event. Yeah. Ah um, uh, yes, yes, yes. The sweepstakes, but not the. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. That we'll we'll save that because now we have to talk about the actual event roller because we haven't we haven't reviewed it yet. It's not in the show notes. <laughs> um, no. So that happened. Uh, weird name for a child uh, in this quest. Yeah. I. What is his name again? Napolnapilonk or Naliponk. Yeah, something like that. Oh, it's all these pictures yeah. of. Cats characters that I need to scroll back through. Mm, <laughs> I think it's Nalipunk. Nali, yeah, I think so. Yeah, or something nip, like that. Nip, nipple. Nali nipple. 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 Um, his, name, his name is Nipple. Yeah. yeah. Mm. The, the there's a story. We're not going to spoil that, but it's just your standard Starlight story. Basically, it's a little it's, different because it feels very similar to last year's. Yeah, it is. It's pretty much almost the same, except for the. Uh, addition of a chocobo i guess mm, um yeah. the the they've added a new mechanic to the mini game because the mini game is back the choir mini game which yeah. is uh hold and then release yeah. release hold and release yeah. yeah it's the most awkward of the three yeah it feels a bit off really i find it sometimes feels a bit off but it I'm I still think the tapping one feels mm -hmm. the weirdest. The tipping one, yeah, the, the, the tipping, tapping one's the tapping okay one. <laughs> because it seems to be. In, I mean, you you pretty much have to press the mouse button like once every minute or something for it to still register your tapping. Mm. It's very forgiving. Yeah. Um. So um, uh, the song is weird. Yeah, they added Starlight to Chocobo as a second. I like option. this. I like it better than last year's song. Yeah, it's I'll say that. Fun, yeah. yeah, okay, it I will agree with like that. It feels more like a real, a real life song. Yeah, I don't know if I it particularly is. enjoy it still, but it's no, mm, no. But it's fine for the time of year. It's not something I'm listening to outside. Of I it. prefer just the starlight theme, just the theme that we hear every year. But uh, sure. Well, maybe it. we'll get that next year because they'll probably use this mini game again. Yeah. Because that's weird. Because the starlight theme has like a choir in the background. I guess it's just it, it, it isn't. It wouldn't it has work. No lyrics, but they can no. add lyrics. Yeah, they can. Um, yeah, uh, just a standard Starlight event. What do you feel about the rewards or the cost of the rewards? There's also obviously there's two difficulties, just like last year. Uh, it's, get... it's, the hard one is hard. It's actually kind of challenging. Mm -hmm. It's harder, but I... I mean, you only have to get good or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, to perfect it is. is... Yeah, it's somewhat of a challenge, but if you're just I gonna... mean, I've never gotten all perfect hits on it, but I have done it without 
any errors. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's that difficult. No, it's not that difficult. And I don't think it's harder than last year's at least. But it it, it, it does go with the beat. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It matches the beat better than last year's. It, it does. Oh. And you can also choose last year's, by the way. <laughs> so um, yeah. 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 Um, I think you need to do it almost like six or eight times or something mm -hmm. to get all the awards. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not, not a lot. Six times, I yeah. think. Yeah. On the harder mode one. I, I mm. noticed on the on the quest thing, have we how long has this been a thing where it says branching rewards it's for this one because you can do if you choose to do the easy one you get two yeah is this the first time we see that because i've no it did it last year as well it did it last year oh it's just a starlight thing i guess it's existed elsewhere but i can't like someone on the youtube comments or somewhere else but i can't remember it yeah okay so it's a starlight thing i guess or at halloween okay so it's like an event thing okay um i just realized i'd never read it before um mm. okay um speaking of starlight there is a, a star companion okay so this is weird there's there are two two contests being held right now uh oh. for the 14 community um one for na one for eu and slash pal oh. so includes australia i guess australia um so the first one this is the na one uh actually i want to i want to do the eu one first because this is the one you're used to so it says, uh, it's a starlight, well, it says starlight party screenshot contest. Screenshot contest. Uh, starlight, starbright, form your light party and get ready for the starlight celebration. Send us your best screenshot featuring you and your friends for a chance to receive a prize. Uh, entry period from Friday the 20th of December, so yesterday that started, uh, to Friday, January 3rd, 2020 at 4 p.m. GMT, 5 p.m. Central European. Uh, theme, take a screenshot featuring your character and three of your friends spending time together during the Starlight Celebration. Oh, need friends uh, for stupid competition. Yeah, we the, should enter, guys. <laughs> we can all win. We should enter, yeah. No. Uh, the EU community team will select <laughs> ten winning teams based on, over, uh, on the overall quality of the screenshot. The entries will be judged on the character's outfits, the background, and the composition of the screenshot. So this is very standard... Uh -huh screenshot contest um what is the prize the prizes are the usual ones the okay. gaelic mm, hit and cap okay. uh, yeah uh then when you go to the na one at first we thought it was just the same thing but then the title is announcing the star companion screenshot sweepstakes uh mm. oh you're so fancy over there uh the starlight <laughs> The Starlight Celebration has arrived in Eorzea as friends and loved ones gather together under twinkling lights while carolers begin their performances. Meanwhile, our thoughts turn to a special companion that's been by our side since our very first steps into adventure. Wow. This Starlight Celebration, we'd like to show our gratitude to the faithful Chocobo companions that have been part of our lives for so many years. We're challenging participants to snap a screenshot with their chocobo while you both enjoy the starlight celebration and share it with the world. A random selection of winners will be drawn, <laughs> so be sure to capture some memories with your lovable mm -hmm. companion during this starlight celebrations. And this is the extra weird, and I, I think it's for French Canada, probably, but yeah. it's, uh, mm -hmm. it, it has English with, like, please see the official rules, and I'm not going to read this in French, but there's a French line underneath. It's the same, mm -hmm. li same sentence, just in French. Just found that funny, because there's no French on the EU one. Um... So uh, there you go. There's some sweepstakes for you uh, in the uh, NA. I kind of like the NA one better than. I like it in some ways because it's but more in you can theme. just. I could just mm. take a picture of the wall with my <laughs> chocobo nearby, and I could win. <laughs> well, they have. Si they have no, they have made it because they didn't say how many they had to draw. So if they just get like ten entries of people with a wall and a chocobo, right. they are not forced to pick those ten. That's they can true. be like, oh, we only found one winner this year. <laughs> So if you send in a lot of troll entries, but they can just ignore them. But it says a random selection of winners. It doesn't say that there's any criteria for being yeah. picked. Oh, yeah. It's very... Yeah, so they can do whatever they want. Yeah. Mm. I like the chocobo art for this, because he's just chocobo going... Ah! Yeah. Ah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so both of these contests uh, run at the same time. I didn't add the time... Time isn't noted. Oh, because they tell you to go to the official just, rules. Yeah. Um, so there yeah, you go. Cool. 
Uh, jump on that. Mm-hmm. Weird that the art is slightly different. Is it really? Is it? Oh yeah, it's like the the it's NA on one is like right. closer up and darker. Yeah. yeah, they've just cropped it differently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very odd. Uh, okay, worth mentioning this as well. The Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers Art of Reflection His- History's Forsaken Art Book is now on sale for both NA and EU. That's um, right. So that's good. The shipping price for you guys. Oh my. Seven ninety nine probably. Frick, I was like ah. Art book. I can finally order art books. I go to the EU store. It's like 30 euros for the book. And I'm like, mm. okay, that's fine. No, it was 29. All right, I can't remember. And then go to shipping. 30. 30 yeah. euros for shipping. I have to pay 60 euros. How do you buy mm. anything? <laughs> and that's like, not even all. that's not even counting import duties and tax. Like I have to pay that mm. in addition. So it's going to be like probably like 80 euros for that art book. That's awful, awful. Yeah, too much. If only you had Amazon in Norway. Mm. We do have Amazon. We use Amazon.co.uk, but yeah, one. but then you still have yeah. It's not good. That's why I'm saying you need your own Amazon. We do they need do... our own Amazon. But uh, either way, the the art books are shipped from France, so it's just unfortunate. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. Well, if you buy it from from the EU store, but I'm assuming. Amazon UK has it in the UK. If it's I've a... not even checked. Well, you should I'll have a look. People um, are saying it's, it's on Amazon. It might so. be worth mentioning also that all of that uh, rubbish that they showed off, like the uh, acrylic statues and stuff, mm. they all look for sale as well. They're so if you want an acrylic sale. Emmett mm. Selk looking like a ballerina, yeah. you can get it. I'm so sorry. I and like almost. I crackers. like pretty much all of the 14 merch, but yeah. that I is a step is. too is far for me. Yeah, I, I mean it, it looks all right. I display it. They're if I too exp- They're also like some of them are more expensive than others. It's like different yeah. prices. It's very. Them itself strange. cost more ink. Yeah, I mean right. you, you could say that all of all merch is is like plastic or like it's just a bunch. It's it's worthless in mm-hmm. when you think about it. But this one sort of reminds you of how worthless it is. It's like a, a sheet mm-hmm. of of a plastic. <laughs> with I feel a, like acrylic with a, stands. Some artwork behind it. Um, I, I feel like the acrylic stands are very much like a Japanese merch kind of thing. Maybe, they maybe are. I guess so. Yeah, it's seventy p more expensive on Amazon, but we'll have free shipping. shipping. So mm, well, there you go. There you go. Nice. I, I should check Amazon too. They usually have yeah. lower shipping costs. And of course, if you get it, you can get the wind up Dolia Chai minion. Yeah. yeah. It's very you get cute. little Chinas with two. You get two minions for the price of one. Mm. I mean, mm. one minion that's yeah. got two characters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, moving on. We didn't win anything on the vi- during the video game awards. Uh, oh. I feel like we should have at least won one. But um, don't worry. PlayStation.blog 2019 has awarded um, Final Fantasy XIV... The best ongoing game of 2019. Thank you, PlayStation.blog. We did it. Hooray. Uh, Yay. So the long-running Final Fantasy XIV took home this year's Platinum Trophy for best ongoing game, fueled by this year's excellent Shadowbringers expansion and the consistent stream of content updates and developer communication the team behind this beloved MMORPG has become known for. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Monster Hunter World, Rainbow Six Siege, and No Man's Sky are taking home trophies today as well. Yeah, but who cares about I mean, them? It's, still, it's all about it's the official PlayStation website. Oh yeah, so. it is. It is the official. Yeah, this is it's Sony's still a big deal. Yeah. awards. So yeah, it's it's yeah. it's still a, a nice. Yeah, they, we also I won some gold it, trophies. Fourteen yeah. deserves more praise. <laughs> It really does, it, but at the same time, I'm kind of okay with it being still a bit under the radar because I, <laughs> I don't really want like 10 million people always online and it being in the limelight constantly. Mm-hmm. I'm fine with it being as it is now. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, do you hear that they apparently played fake applause when Fortnite won <laughs> the award instead of 14? That's funny. That was funny. Um, okay, um, right. Uh, let's talk about what. More to add, Georgi, do you want to add fuel to the fire on the, on the video no, game awards? Just re-read, no, just rereading the end part of this description. Thanks to muscular support <laughs> from their respective 
communities. Uh, muscular mus- support. We're all very buff. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If you're gonna be at an award ceremony, you gotta be strong enough to clap. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. Let's talk about serious stuff for a second um, before we get to our main story. So <clears throat> there, there's been uh, an, another event uh, that's occurred in our community. Uh, Twitch streamer Arthas got suspended recently in 14 for um, calling out a player on stream. Um, and this was a little scary, if, especially when it was first announced, because it was details weren't quite clear at first. We only got the screenshot mm. from the GM, I believe, that circulated. Mm. And it made everyone worried, <laughs> because it, is Square Enix watching... All of our streams and just waiting for us to fuck up. <laughs> wow. I feel like that was what the initial theory was, like when they when don't came have out. the staff to watch every single No, no. Yeah. But I'm assuming, yeah. Uh, and then more details ca- would came in. We got to see the video about what happened. Um, I think we have a clearer picture of what happened. Um, so uh, what happened was that Arthas was playing with randoms parsing mm. and then called them out on their bad parse on stream mm. um showed that he even had like an overlay with like booing on a screen mm. and showed the person's name and it also showed the yeah. contact list so it showed the server and the full name um yeah uh and there is one thing that we all know every every creator knows every streamer knows is that you don't, and every player knows you can parse. Well, you're, you're, it's against the terms of service, but you don't tell anyone. You don't yeah. show anyone. Well, you can't show. See, this is a big gray area. Yeah. Basically, just don't talk about it and don't call people yeah. out on their parse. Mm-hmm. And he did both of those things on stream. Um, and I think that sort of justified what happened. Because... See, this is difficult to to talk about because I I don't know how I feel about. It. How do you guys feel about this? I mean, you can just refer to what I said when they were when they changed the the harassment policy back in the day, uh-huh. and it's that it's it's free to be nice. It doesn't mm-hmm. cost you anything to be yes a nice person. And this is the most obvious. Don't do this. Yeah, I anyone who did this should be punished. Like I, actually, it's I, very... I agree. Yeah, go on. It's very common sense in the sense that it's combined something that you're not supposed to talk about in general, which mm. is passing, and then shaming them for that, shaming just a random person for passing poorly as well. Yeah. I think if he was, I think it would be more of a gray issue if he was just like insulting this person without bringing in something that's already looked down, not looked down upon, but like is seen as not something to talk about outside of the community anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He he said some pretty mean stuff he, too. He, yeah. I, like, I agree. Mm-hmm. But I like, think, I, he might, said it. I think he might not have... This may not have happened if he wasn't past, if he wasn't talking about the past specifically. Mm-hmm. Right. I feel like that was the... Yeah. Uh... Zooming in on the parse, like actually... I also... Is... Hated, one of the worst things. I also hated like some of the arguments uh, for for the defense of art not not defense but like the complaints about the decision that they made because now there were I, I read this multiple times that oh now people are gonna um like um bait streamers into like calling them out by being bad on purpose mm. you don't have to be an asshole if people are bad it's not like something that we're like built into us mm. that we're like, oh, 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 I'm going to call you out, you know, <laughs> your bad parse. Uh, that's not, you know, you can be nice. You can be nice without being like, you don't have to be like, oh, hello, everyone. Today we <laughs> you don't have to be like that. You just don't be an asshole. Um, and I, I think it's funny because Arthur also said that he deserved to be banned. So he he agreed with the decision eventually, I think. Mm. Um, mm. But um, yeah, because he's it's weird, though, because he's been doing this for a while. 
he's been pretty aggressive against players for a while on his stream so it was i felt mm -hmm. like it was a matter of just a matter of time before it would come back and bite him um, i want to say it's also maybe on the top of the moderation team's mind right now because of what occurred with the world first race right. with the most recent that's ultimate mm -hmm. yeah because they they prefer there not to be any sort of question about whether people are doing anything against the terms of service yeah and yeah. that's why they've targeted Arthas in this instance yeah mm. uh, i don't particularly the, like the narrative people are pushing to of like uh, oh, like, oh no, you can never say anything bad to anybody now, ever. Mm. <laughs> Watch out, guys. If you're playing, mm. if you're in the duty finder and you have a bad tank and you type something in Discord to your friend about them, they're yeah. going to come and get you. Yeah. And like, that is the most ridiculous, not even the same thing. Mm -hmm. You're not streaming to like a couple hundred people. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. Yeah. It, no, you can, you can still be angry and shit talk people. Just like, don't. Square Enix you don't, aren't Big Brother. They don't have right. access to every single one of your logs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else is there to say about this? Uh, just don't well, there's, do that. There's the question of whether people that, that people have had that whether Square Enix should be the people that should have been the ones to respond to this specifically. Right. I sort of agree with that. I think... Yeah. I, I don't think because the whole event happened outside of the game. Yeah. That it should have been a Twitch decision. I don't, it should have been Twitch's decision on what to do with his channel. It's not he wasn't doing anything in game, so he wasn't doing mm -hmm. anything within Square's product. Yes. That's sort of the problem. Not that I, I agree with what he did no. in any way, but mm -hmm. I think it sets a bad precedent for them being able to just jump on anything that happens outside of games. Mm -hmm. Um like are uh, like on Twitter or on any social media or on your streams or your YouTube channel or whatever. Haven't um, they responded to things on Twitter before though? I think so. They but have. it's still it's not That was it, more for like a difficult one. Sexy modding stuff. Sexy yeah, modding and then posting like, the picture I, and then having the URL to their Twitter like in their search I comment. Think, Wasn't that the whole thing? Yeah. But is there nothing in Arthur's a character that links to his Twitch account? Not that I know of. I think some people thought, but when they looked at his search info, like his lodestone no... has it. Yes, so no, he does. lodestone has it. Okay, okay. Then. Mm -hmm. well, well, then in that case, then it's there's not some, in but it's still connected to the Twitch yeah, channel. Yeah. yeah, I think if he'd been shouting in game, then it would have been much more justified to easily, you know, there'd be no no need to comment on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. but because it happened entirely on his stream, it's it's a difficult one. Mm -hmm. But just don't do it. Yeah, yeah. Or if you're gonna call people out, don't. Like zoom in on their name and okay. shout, "This is the right. guy who did it!" Right. And look yeah. at my pass; he's clearly at the bottom. I feel like the the bigger you are in the community, the more of a like response. Like you, you, you have a yeah, you have a you responsibility have a to, you know, you can't if you, hold the rules of the game. Yeah. Um, and be a be a good role model. Yeah. Exactly. Like. You would never see us be like, ah, oh, look at this fucking dickhead. Yeah. He's just, he's just, he's just typing my aggro. He's like, this is just DPS. I mean, we might say that like jokingly. Mm. And I feel like in a very clear joking context, but. Sometimes we I, do it, but we do it with people that we know, you know, I, for the most yeah. part. It'll be people that are on stream. <laughs> well, Ma I know why I'm you're making this sound, Georgi. I know <laughs> that you're referring to Mela. Mela's been, you know, but never called anyone but out Mela like never that. Ne Mela never says their name. No. Well, actually, that's untrue. But <laughs> it's all falling apart. I, <laughs> oh, no. I think if Mela was hosting the stream, it probably would have happened to us mm, already. Maybe. But yeah. thankfully, he's not. So, no, exactly. no. so it's fine. Also, Mela's not passing. He's not. No. True. He's... Well, we don't We're know not... if he's passing. Specifically... But... <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> we can't comment on that. But he's well, not okay. showing it or talking there's, about yeah, it. Yeah, there's no or evidence that Mela is passing. Mm hmm. You've never unleashed the speaker's fans on someone. <laughs> no. 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 Um yeah, so uh be nice and you'll I don't think this is going to be a problem. Most of the 14 streamers are pretty uh, you know, they don't do this. So mm -hmm. I yeah. may this yeah. might be a wake up call for the few that do. This might be their maybe that's why Square Enix did it. It's like a 
made an example. A warning. Yeah, it's I'm like a warning. My ways. Yeah. And I mean, like, it's a pretty good person to pick for a warning, considering this guy was in the world ultimate race or whatever. Yeah. So like, yeah, yeah, that does carry with it some kind of responsibility, mm -hmm. at least like a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, right, he only got a seven day suspension though, so he yeah. will be back in 14 very soon. Uh, hopefully he's learned his lesson. Um, mm -hmm. Right. Can't play on Christmas Day though, sadly. No, well he he said he'd be away, so it didn't really matter. Ah, so <laughs> He said that, but deep down we know yeah. he was weeping. Damn it. <laughs> um, he's enjoy his that's Christmas where I want to spend Christmas. With all my imaginary friends <laughs> in Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah. Listen, Not even will come over... You yeah, with my trust. My house. With my with my <laughs> real friends. <laughs> I've, I've dressed all of the all of the NPCs, all my squadron members up in Christmas outfits. Can Aww. we go? <laughs> that sounds very sweet. We got a uh, dust vigil together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Stone vigil, please. We need to Stone move on. We need to move on. Uh, main story. Uh, there's an interview with my uh, with Soken, um, mm. by. Uh, I had the I had the name of. Oh, it's in there. There, uh, VGM mm. online. Video game music online. Oh. Um, VGM M for mic. Yeah, video game mic online. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oh, um, Masayoshi Soken has been the subject of many uh, accolades for his soundtracks for the MMORPG Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn and its expansions Heavensward and Stormblood. In Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers, Soken continued his role as main composer and sound director, crafting an equally impressive soundtrack to accompany the tale of a world engulfed in eternal light and the efforts to restore balance to it. Uh, this is their fourth interview, so we have missed three interviews. Um, no, I think we've covered at least one of them in the past. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah, of course. Uh, there are uh, spoilers in this uh, interview. Some mm. light... No, it doesn't say light. C it contains some story on location spoilers. No, there's pretty late game spoilers in this okay, interview. Okay, big spoilers in this interview. But um, I don't think it Why warrants a spoiler warning. <laughs> yeah. Why are you watching? At this point, don't watch. Uh, if you haven't finished the... Uh... <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah. Point. yeah. Uh, okay, uh, Masayoshi Soken san, thank you once again for your interview. Okay, this is this is how this interview is going to work. Uh, so, VGMO says, Masayoshi Soken san, thank you once again for your interview with our site. From the first trailer that was released, it was clear that Sh Shadowbringers had a very different tone. It's the first expansion to feature a male vocalist in the theme song and a male choir in the menu. We also get a lot of gritty electric guitar in the field battle theme, Ren Rencounter, the first dungeon theme, and of course, in the theme song, Shadowbringers itself. Can you reflect on the overall approach to this expansion and some of the uh, compositional choices you made while putting it together? Is it really called Rencounter, the battlefield theme? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I guess so. Um, it is. So, so, okay. <laughs> So it says, when it came to when it came time to begin work on Shadowbringers, I was uh, contemplating whether or not the main theme, which almost serves as the bones of the game, should be the typical orchestral piece often associated with a numbered Final Fantasy title. I think an orchestral approach would still have fit well considering the storyline for Shadowbringers. However, the key word darkness, the Dark Knight job being a focal point of the expansion, and the key theme of taking back the night sky drove me to pursue something different. Historically speaking, no numbered Final Fantasy title has featured a title track that has the guitar as its main instrument or focus. I knew that trying something new would be quite ambitious, not only from a production standpoint, but also from the perspective of the players and their expectations. It's true, I haven't thought about that, that he, it's not very orchestral, the main theme. It's like, a, well, it's no, still got the big no. drums, <laughs> but I guess the guitar is the main instrument. It's very butt rock. But in the best way possible. Is but it rock. butt rock? <laughs> I would I, call it I butt would say rock. the battle theme is at least butt rock. Okay, well, I, I the might. But, the battle theme is, yeah. but I don't know if I think I would consider Shadowbringers itself the song. You have to, you're going to have to explain butt rock, Rollo, because not everyone is with us on this. <laughs> it's it's like like really over the top rock. Like think like the the most generic rock band ever. Mm. 
like like Coldplay, like Coldplay. Yeah, right. Imagine like a Coldplay it's, song, but like a yeah. bit grungier. Mm -hmm. But I it's mean this cheesy. in the best way possible. Yeah, it's very cheesy. Yeah. Rock or music. or like all the music from Sonic, Sonic. Adventure too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's okay. a better one. I spent many days pondering how I could make this work and create a guitar-led theme that matched the Shadowbringers I envisioned in my mind. I was confident this could be a main theme that matched the gameplay experience much better than an orchestral piece. At the same time, I couldn't help but wonder if our players would expect the theme to be orchestral because it was a Final Fantasy title. Would the production team reject my idea to feature the guitar and not show any understanding? Then, a thought occurred to me, which showed me the way. <laughs> One key theme that I have always taken away from Final Fantasy titles is that of taking on new challenges. How could I call this Final Fantasy if I, if I did not take on my own challenges? That settled it. I was adamant in creating a piece that would feature the sounds of a guitar that matches the gameplay experience no matter what. Surely the FFXIV community would understand why I chose to feature the guitar in the main theme once they play the game. I remember running to producer and director Naoki Yoshida and telling him <laughs> all of this. <laughs> that I wanted to... Such a... You can see it. You can, like... It's so easy to visualize. Um, yeah. uh, that I wanted to create a main theme that features a guitar sound. The main theme, Shadowbringers, has a very distinct characteristic in the guitar sound. Typically, we tend to distort the guitar sound a lot to produce a very heavy tone. However, to leverage the fleeting... Point... How do I say Poignant. it? Poignant and melancholic facets of the story, these heavier tones would not fit at all. I deliberately tried to make the sound of the guitar as clean and dry as possible. I will admit that creating a song that would be featured as the main theme with these cleaner tones was quite the challenge. However, once the theme song was set, I was able to quickly decide on the overall musical direction of the expansion. So he always... Uh, one thing I have to say about Soken whenever he's interviewed, his answers are long. And they're very mm. good about the creative process. Yeah. Kind of makes it sound really exciting. Mm -hmm. Like, like just being able to, I don't know, I'm not a very creative person, so it's really cool to, to see how he goes about things. Mm -hmm. uh... I think Sorokin really enjoys making music. Oh, yeah, music, yeah sure. that's why, where he is, where he is. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Um... I think he said in, like, a pre previous interview or something, and uh, maybe it was a FanFest interview, that he wouldn't he always wanted to have something like he liked rock, but he couldn't like really put that into fourteen. So that Shadowbringers was like the perfect excuse as well to do that. So he's probably been thinking about it for a while. He's, he's been putting rock it into in yeah. yeah yeah he's been putting rock yeah, into he fourteen. Has. <laughs> he has, but he couldn't put Time. it in the main theme. He can't he can't put Every, it in like big true. pieces. Um, Every single PvP theme. I think it's I, just the, mm, the most yeah that's true rock. that's true. <laughs> um, and I think also. Um, Umatsu helped him because in 1.0, Umatsu put yeah. weird guitar tracks like in the game, like rock. Well, track. that's because Umatsu didn't know what he was. Making. Yeah, so he just gave a little bit, little bit of everything. Yeah, I mean, you gotta admit the little motion battle theme doesn't fit like anywhere. <laughs> no, but you can get it now for Blue Mage. By the way, you can get yeah. the yeah. Nail of the Heavens from uh, from Blue Mage, uh, the vendor, Allied Seals. Um, right. Uh, each area in the world of Norrand has a distinct... This is a question. Um, each area of the world of Norrand has a distinctly different sound from one another. W what were some key inspirations for the areas of Amarang, Ilmeg, Lakeland, and Raktika? Greatwood. Soken says, Whenever I work on music uh, for the different areas, I start by physically walking around each area with a character in-game. There's a huge amount of visual information you can absorb just from looking at and experiencing the scenery. After that, I will read any reference materials that, I can, that can provide more information on the unique qualities of each area, the state of mind the players may be in when they first enter the area, at what part of the story one first enters the area, and anything else the team has provided. I take this information in and mull it over in my mind. Uh, from there, the music starts to naturally flow and come to life, one track after the other. Can you imagine that? So he goes into like Raktika in silence and yeah. just yeah. decides how it should be. Yeah, I mean, I, I can understand that. Like, you get kind of like a feel for the area and just like what hits you. And sometimes you just think of that weird level from Sonic Adventure One. 
God of Why is everybody Sonic references? From <laughs> because the yeah. level from Sonic Adventure One. Mm. Not not okay, not level, no. but the fucking the temple. The, the, okay, hey, okay, oh. okay. Nice reference. <laughs> let's not let's not dive into that. Uh, yeah, but I like that he's actually going through the areas because uh, we just brought up Umatsu what he did for 1.0, yeah. which is the example of like when the composer has no idea what's going on, yeah. um, which led to. I would say a good OST, but also a very uh, disconnected OST. It's like it didn't yeah. really fit. Some fit, others did not. Uh, while here, yeah. I feel like I don't feel like any of the tracks feel out of place in Shadowbringers, nor any of the other uh, nah. uh, areas for that matter in, in, that, in that regard. But the Soken is good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Soken is good. Controversial uh, statement. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm all about those controversial. Uh, the hottest takes right hottest here. takes did you know that uh in the song ironic nothing's actually ironic <laughs> uh, uh. anyways uh next question uh, Calusia is unusual in that it uh, has a completely different theme at the beginning of 5.0 from the end it starts off as unmatched pieces and becomes the quick way and a world divided why did you decide to give Calusia a new day theme in addition to its night theme God, that, I can't really remember the original then. <laughs> uh, They're actually not that different. He goes on uh, to explain. Yeah, he, he how goes on. They aren't right. that but, but I feel like they talked about this. Have we talked about this last week about Calusia's theme changing? Um, I think several we may times. have talked about it during the post show, but we didn't ah, get up to it when right. we were doing the. Oh, it's during the bracket thing doing the bracket yeah okay um the initial songs requested for Calusia were completed relatively early and it was implemented into the game pretty early into development as well truth be told the shadowbringers narrative was not fully implemented on the development servers until right before the final deadline by that time there was no that, time what that that means that from what i get from that they didn't add the everlasting light until late into the development period for the people that were in the beta servers right yeah Oh, so yeah. he wouldn't have had an idea of what they would have looked like in terms of that, at least. True, yeah. Um, by that time, there was no time left to create new tracks, but it just so happens that in times like these, Yoshida will come <laughs> running over to my desk and say something like, when you arrive here at this point in the storyline, the cheerful and bright tones of the song here doesn't match. I needed to do something about it. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I receive a request to change songs, <clears throat> but there is just no time left for production, you see. He laughs. There was no way I would have uh, ha- I would have the time to redo it from scratch, so I took the original original song and made some modifications. I changed all the major chords to minor chords, took the sparkly tone of the flute and changed it to a darker piano tone, and did what I could to fulfill the request as best I could. Basically, I created a special song that would never be heard again <laughs> after beating the game. So. Got to be an orchestrian role in it. Oh yeah, they, they, they wouldn't just leave that. Do you want to play them so that people have an idea? Because they're actually quite oh, similar, but what a different. Uh, oh, God. This is a, this... the name of the songs. Uh, I'll just do... Oh, yeah. What do I even... The two songs are Unmatched Pieces and The Quick Way. Actually, I don't remember which one's the day thing. Which one's unmatched Pieces. Unmatched I think pieces. we'll be able to tell if we just listen to them. Unmatched Pieces is the one that plays during the unending light. And then the that now is called... I don't remember what the day theme is called. I'm just you know everything. A world divided. The quick way. Oh, is it the quick oh, okay. way? No, I got no, the, I just no. googled Calusia theme and I got a world divided. Okay, no, go that Calusia one. That's probably the day theme. theme. Calusia day theme a world divided. Okay, this is unmatching pieces. It's horrible. Like it's not horrible. No, I it's really like, like it's spooky. It's, like, it's a little spooky. It's spooky. It's Gordon. It's not. It's a good song. It's just fits. You know, but this is the one that's in the minor chords. Yeah. This uh, fits really well because you end up in that little rundown inn and the rundown village. Yeah. It's very mm. sad. All right, and then this is what we hear today. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's needed. Yeah. See, and this is in the major chords. But see, you can see, you can hear yeah. how similar they are, and that's so. This is the one that he made, made first. Yeah. yeah. He made he made the unending light it version second after Yoshi P asked him to. Yeah, 
I like that. That's pretty cool. Um, right. Uh, <clears throat> uh, there are actually a few other songs that you aren't able to hear in-game after you've finished the story. Those, however, were implement implemented according to plan. Mm -hmm. Um... Okay. Do we remember? Do we know what tracks those are? Do we have any idea? It would idea? be like the sad song that plays in the Crystarium mm. after you're like cracking from all the light inside. Right. You. Oh. Yeah. 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 That uh, one action theme they play, like with the drums. You don't. You know. I don't think the you one think that, that. Yeah. The, the oh, one yeah. that plays in the upper half of um Kalusia, mm -hmm. just yeah. before uh, you go to the yeah. dungeon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It also plays when you're in. Um, Lakeland, and you're doing the instance. Those are two uh, different songs, yeah. right? Oh, okay. So yeah. I'm, I'm thinking of that one then. The, the okay. Lakeland. Yeah, yeah, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. The one oh, I'm yeah. thinking of is the one that played during the Hrothgar reveal trailer, I think. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, with the Eden raid released thus far, we are treated to another series of <coughs> remix tunes, some from Final Fantasy VIII and some from Final Fantasy XIV: A Realm Reborn. Could you discuss the direction you wanted the arrangers to take both with uh, Nobuo Uematsu's classic battle theme, Force Your Way, as well as with both Blinding Indigo and Landslide? Could you discuss some of the challenges that came with recreating the music for Eden, uh, Induation and Eden... Inundation. Inundation. Oh, Inundation and Eden Sepulcher. Sepulcher. I just realized I've never read any of that out loud. That's the first time I've said <laughs> it. Um, I mean, they, these guys really research their stuff before interviews. Oh, they do. Them. Yeah. Uh, well, this is I the mean, magazine it's not that hard specializes. To look up the names of the... It is, yeah, but it's also not that hard to look up the names of songs. But, it Georgi, like we're talking about series. video game journalism. <laughs> they're not, I mean, I there's a lot people, of... We have read interviews where they bad, don't even... There is a lot of bad video game journalism. Yeah. But I think that the, the bad journalism overshadows that there's actually still quite a lot of good journalism mm. out there. Mm. I would think that a site dedicated just to music. Too. That's what I'm saying, though. Right, yeah. this, is, this is their mm -hmm. field. Uh, yeah. It'd be very embarrassing if they didn't know their stuff here. Um, especially since this is their fourth interview with Soken yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, okay, Soken says, We just welcomed two new recruits to our sound team this past spring, and interestingly, they had absolutely no experience in the industry. Uh, what do we do the to get... The video game industry? Or, like... I don't know, he just says the industry. <laughs> I hope they I have some like to think video game. Yeah. <laughs> I hope music. <laughs> they've never they've <laughs> never played any instrument. They don't know anything. Um what did we do to get this these new staff uh who may not even know right from left into the game sound production world? Right. Have them arrange a song they know. <laughs> That's what. Each of our new recruits have differing strengths, and the genres they seemed most capable of producing were different as well. So I had one of them handle uh, an orchestral arrangement, and the other a rock arrangement. I have a particular flow and certain rules when it comes to creating arrangements from past songs. In this particular case, I first taught them about how to go about arranging the track to match the gameplay experience, while teaching them what goals we try to reach with the arrangement. Next, I let them go through many rounds of trial and error, <laughs> bringing the song to near completion. At this stage, I would only step in for some, something I really felt the need to, and then finalize the song. That's how my new recruits and I work together within our time. Oh, time constraints. Sorry, there's weird formatting. Our time constraints to produce these very important songs. Both of, both of these new members were very excited that 14 was their first project after joining Square Enix, and watching them put so much focus on song production made me realize how important they were to our team. It was a truly rewarding experience because we were able to encourage, encourage and challenge each other to reach our limits. That's nice. That's nice. Um, it's, it's nice. It's interesting that every song in the soundtrack is accredited to Soken when it seems <laughs> that he doesn't compose every single song by Isn't, himself. That's how it is, though, right? Yeah. But it's not how it was in previous albums. Specifically in Realm Reborn and um, uh, the Before Media soundtracks, it specifies when it's Soken, when it's Uematsu, or when it's other people. Well, I can understand the Uematsu and Soken thing because they're both big names, but I don't know. Yeah, mm. They're underlings, Georgie. Until they rise to the same level, <laughs> yeah. they don't get accredited. That, I think that's how it is in a lot of creative industries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sad, though, but, you yeah. know. They don't want to credit the juniors because they're too... You know, they're yeah. too far below them One in rank. One day they'll be amazing. I, yeah. I guess I understand that. But... Yeah. Uh, 
I still wish. I still feel like they should be credited though. If they like made in some way, yeah. yeah. They're probably in the credits somewhere. Maybe. Um, okay. Um, I wanted to ask about two tracks in particular that really stood out to me in the score. The first is "What Angel Wakes Me," which to me is one of the most unique trial themes to date. The second, that's the. Uh, is that What's uh, Titania? Uh, yeah, Titania. Yeah. Uh, the second is Neath uh, Dark Waters, the theme from the final area of Shadowbringers, and a very big surprise. There are so many directions this piece could have taken, but the piano and ticking percussion result in a haunting final area theme. Can you talk to us about composing these tracks and how you decided on the tone and direction you wanted to take them in? Um, I really like the Neath Death, Neath De Dark Waters. Uh, yeah, that, it's very that, that the block, whole Amarok, tem, the whole Amarok to, uh, am, te, what am I saying? The whole Tempest to Amarok, like change in that song, the um, light motif and whatever, was yeah, fantastic. It's probably my mm. favorite yeah in the game so far. Yeah. Um, okay, so it says in terms of what Angel wakes me, the Titania trial, the Pixie's personality, the position in which they were put. And the atmosphere of Ilmeg and Titania's uh, domains provided the inspiration for the song immediately. I listen to songs like these fairy... What? I listen fairly. to songs like fairly. these fairly regularly. <laughs> <laughs> like these fairly regularly. And I remember being able to create this theme fairly easily. Okay. That being said, <clears throat> due to the sheer number of notes in the score, I'm sure Koji had quite the time coming up with the English lyrics. <laughs> Uh, as for the Tempest theme, I had many discussions with scenario writer uh, Natsuko Ishikawa when creating this theme. Typically, if we were to have the players traverse to the deepest parts of a final area and reach a giant metropolis that surpasses the imagination, you might think an epic song would be necessary, right? However, I received a request from Ishikawa who was very adamant that the theme for this area be quiet, despite the fact that this area was the deepest depths of the final area. I remember beginning to compose this song and having decided that I would use the piano as my sole instrument. Once the song was done and I was thinking about adding a little something for extra flair, the idea of keeping the beat with something that expressed time came to my mind. I went straight to Ishikawa with that idea, which she was uh, thrilled to hear and we felt it was the right fit. That's how the ticking sound of a clock was, was utilized as the percuss percussion for this song. That's clever. I think this idea. would not. This would not have worked if they used an epic, no song thing. No. No. <laughs> yeah. Just... yeah, something to the equivalent of Azus Law or like the Locks would have not. Mm, fit yeah, at all. and also it's 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 supposed to it gives you it's supposed to feel a little sad, right? So this the yeah, the, mm. yeah so we've well, destroyed this whole habitat. Yeah, mm. yeah. <laughs> if Amarok looked like it does in the dungeon, I could understand it, but. It doesn't. It's like pre-destruction that we explore it in the overworld yeah. as. Yeah. yeah and yeah, even yeah. the dungeon version, like that version of the song, it's it's the just melancholic, like the glory of the older days yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. thing. It's just so, mm. it's really well done. It I like is. it a lot. Yeah. Um, right. The expansion features two vocal themes, the aforementioned uh, Shadowbringers, as well as Tomorrow and Tomorrow, sung by a female vocalist. As uh, so these were the first vocal theme songs you have written for Final Fantasy XIV, what were some of the challenges and expectations you faced regarding the music? We were wondering if perhaps each tune is being sung from the perspective, perspective of Zodiac and Heidelin, respectively. Oh. So concess. Unfortunately, I am not the type of person who creates music while overly focusing on people's expectations. <laughs> the only thing I'm really thinking about is how to deliver a better gameplay experience to our players. After all, the blood of a gamer courses... Sorry, that was just... What a cheesy line, but here we go. After all, the blood of a gamer courses deep through my veins, too. I it's not mine. <laughs> it's not... <laughs> once, <It's concerning>. I, <laughs> once I decide to do something a certain way, I continue to push forward like a runaway train until I am done. As, mm. for, uh, mm, as for Zodiac and Heidelin, unfortunately I cannot comment on this. Uh, perhaps you can ask Koji, who wrote the wonderful lyrics, when you get the chance. Mm -hmm. So Koji knows, everyone. Koji knows. He's a runaway train that will compose until he must seek out 
chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Such uh, a chaotic life. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I understand. It's very fun. I, I vibe with it, though. Yeah. Bonk. He does a lot of interesting things. He's cool. Yeah, yeah. Lives a cool life. Yeah. He gets he gets to lead an orchestra. He gets to be part of a rock band, and then he gets to come back and work on fourteen and eat chicken. Eat lots of chicken. Yeah. <laughs> what a dream. Uh, okay. During your experiences with Shadowbringers, did you have a favorite track to compose for the latest expansion? And if so, what was it and why? Uh, so says that would be none other than Shadowbringers. Following the teaser reveal in October at the Las Vegas Fan Festival, the trailer continued to grow and the song evolved with it. Eventually, we included Eternal Wind, and then came the male choir, and then the male and female vocals, and finally, we closed it out with I Am Shadow, I Am The Light. I can't think of any song that was more exciting than this. Oh. Well, it was pretty fun seeing it kind of change up with yeah. the trailer. Yeah. It was very, yeah. very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, it also, like, not putting Eternal Wind in the first part, the first yeah. showing of it, like, k- kept the Crystal Tower storyline hidden longer. Like, mm-hmm. I, yeah. Um, I mean, hidden. People. Hidden. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> um, right. That, uh, this is the end of the interview. Uh, thank you so much for speaking to us today uh, about your work on Shadowbringers. Is there anything else you would like to share with readers about the music of Shadowbringers? Either its current form through 5.1 or a tease slash preview for what's to come in 5.2 and beyond. Soken uh, says, Shadowbringers delivers so many exciting songs which are like nothing we've heard before. I would love for you all to crank up the volume to enjoy each of these tracks. As for me, I am currently working on my creations for patch 5.2. Let me tell you, patch 5.2 is great in so many different ways. Super look forward to it. Aww. <laughs> well. I love hearing interviews from Sokin. The music yeah. is one of my favorite parts about 14. Yeah. I think that's clear because I was the one that designed the music bracket. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just like wish there was... Oh, sorry, no, I wish there were more opportunities for Sokin to speak about it. Because there's, I would love to hear his profile on every single song if I had the the chance to. Because mm-hmm. with interviews like this, they only, yeah, with mm-hmm. interviews like this, they only focus on like the main, like main highlight themes. Like they talk about Titania's theme, they talk about Amaron. But I want to hear about how he came up with like the the Amarang theme or something like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, Amarang was pretty out there. Yeah, that one, mm. yeah. Musically, so yeah, it would be nice to hear more from him. I'm surprised they I didn't like ask Soka. about it. That is such a weird, like, strange track. Um, very different. We talked about this. Uh, in the I think show, it's I just they can't ask about every single no. zone. No, I guess. Yeah. Why not? not Why they not? Talk <laughs> they talk about both Kalusha and uh, the Tempest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't talk about Rat Ticket, right, to be honest. Well, they did a little. They did a little, but they... they only touched on the idea of it. Like he runs around the zones mm. and comes up with things. Yeah. Nah. Uh, he should get more screen time. At interviews. Yeah, he's mm. not. He's such a such a character, and he is a real. He's a very <laughs> much character. Yeah. Crazy chicken nugget man. Maybe they're afraid because <laughs> I feel like if anyone was gonna like like accidentally spoil upcoming story <laughs> would be Selkin. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so they might I don't be... think he's that like I, <laughs> I don't know of inhibitions. Selkin is there, Rollo. <laughs> yeah. What are you trying to say? <laughs> you know it's true. Oh um Alright. Yeah, I'm yeah. not as creative unfortunately or good oh. at music. Well um, that's our main story. I think this is the first episode where we might actually not. We might. Well, we have Mogmail, so we'll do that. Let's see. Let's just hope the Mogmail saves us. Here's Mogmail. Uh, Mogmail. No sound. Perfect. No sound. Just how Mogmail. we like it. That's okay. That will add a good minute. <laughs> oh, well, we got that oh, you part. You fixed it halfway. No, you have to redo the whole okay, thing. Okay, sorry. Okay, here we go. Boop. There won't be audio 
That won't be audio for this. Oh, that's that. last week's. That's, that's last week's. Sorry. Oops. Don't read that. That's uh, uh, spoilers from the past. Un take that out of your eyeballs. Don't <laughs> forget about it. How dare you? <laughs> Uh, okay, let's try that. <laughs> this is from, uh, Kafi... Kafanawe. Huh? Oh, it's not even on screen, this one. Um... Right. Hi there. First of all, congrats, uh, the anniversary. Keep up the good work. Um, make it hail? Make it hail. It's not like make it rain, but... Cold. Uh, but cold, yeah, 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 yeah. Just coins, throw not, no, not notes. cold coins at us. Uh, oh, ow. Uh, since most of the mug mails lately Better have been hot coins. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Since most, most, since most of the mug mails lately have been about Emmett Selk, who am I to stop this from happening? Ugh, thanks for adding to the Emmett Selk pile. Here, have okay. some more uh, ranting about our favorite favorite Asian. I'm sure Emmett knew who were uh, who we were from the start. Not only. Uh, could he see our soul's color just fine? When Hythlodius talks about our thinly spread soul, he's referring to Sorrel souls. He's referring to Ardbert, which Emmett never acknowledged. But when he got introduced in the cutscene right before Il Meg, he says, "With a soul such as that, which could have been about the density caused by the rejoinings." Um. Oh God, uh, what's happening? Uh, but then the other scions too should have the same density and is looking at us only or because of our complete self I like to think that since he knew what kind of person we were back then he wanted to try with a diff different approach because of us so he tags along at times at times helps and guides us gives us some insight and stories about the past answering our questions poking out memories with snarky remarks not that you would remember any of this quote end quote please remember something anything I think he was also secretly and wistfully trying to stir our soul from its dormant state and bring back his old friend. As for his surprise when he catches that infamous glimpse of our true self after rejoining with Ardbert, not knowing about his existence, we just rejoined in front of him like out of nowhere and with such perfect timing. He might have even thought that something he did or said worked and we were finally back. He gets his hopes up just to see them crash and burn for the umpteenth time. That would explain his surprise and consequent rage, in my opinion. Anyway, I would have appreciated if Emmett had said anything at all because about who we were, or at least what our name was back then. Damn it. Yoshi, Yoshi please. Um, there, I said, here, I said it. Uh, I, I, it might be nothing new, but it's my POV. Thanks for listening. Please take care. Thank you. Oh, sorry. My, you. The laptop that I'm reading on is having a very... It's not, it's not a good day for it. Um, <clears throat> he's reading it on his Kindle. It's. I'm reading it on my. No, this is a Chromebook. Actually, I've this. Oh, you've upgraded or downgraded? I don't know uh, what I have, iPad. but it's here. An Acer. Looks like it's an Acer. Yeah. Uh, right. Not sponsored. What do you think? Did he know? I think it would be cool if he knew, and I. And it would make some kind of sense when he's trying to like pal around with us, not as in like, you know being our friend but like maybe he would think that if we understood or at least somewhat remembered we could like see his side mm -hmm. of it mm -hmm. i think there is evidence to suggest that he knew that we were more than other people in terms of our connection to amaranth and the pre-sundered world like when yeah. he has th that comment as you're watching them rebuild the lift in yeah. Fallujah. Yeah. He, I don't think he knows that we're his friend, maybe. In, but yeah, I think he mm. might think that he knows that we are, we used to be one of them. Yes. Um, yeah, I would go with that. More. Otherwise, that knew... comment at the lift wouldn't make any sense to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if he knew we were exactly who we were, why wouldn't he share that further? And why would right. him and all the assets mean... pick people? pretty much trying to kill it could them. be that he's afraid that we won't believe him or that we won't understand his perspective like when we speak to hythlodius in well, there's Amaranth, too yeah because hythlodius specifically mentions that he knows who we are mm -hmm. and he sort of Which teases means that like that emmet should too because no, he's made this right because no, hythlodius has stronger ability to perceive auras than emmet does yeah. but um hythlodius does say 
I suspect Emmett may know. Or if he doesn't, he's not 100% sure. Like, he seems he's to say testing, that Emmett... Like he's tells... trying to figure it yeah. out, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes more sense. Because there's something. Because otherwise he he it's, makes a lot of comments like, about it. It's sort of like Emmett Selk knows, but he's afraid... He, like, he suspects, but he's afraid to confirm it because he doesn't... He worries that he won't get the response he wants. Yeah. But I'm, I'm definitely sure that he doesn't know 100% until that moment where we yes. turn into the thing. Do you remember quite a long time ago when someone looked at the colour of our ether and said it was blue? No, I don't actually. Wait, Sorry. Can you remind me? Can you tell us when this happened? And who? Uh, well, I was hoping you would be able to tell me. <laughs> oh. oh. I... Uh... I'm sure. Are you sure you haven't dreamt this? Real thing. <laughs> I, mm, I don't, don't know. Particularly remember? No, I don't remember that being mentioned anywhere. Are into. you saying this because it, you think it supports <clears throat> the Oshan theory? Not that it supports the Oshan theory, but it 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 is worth mentioning it if it did actually happen. Because why has that never been brought up again? But Oshan's oh, icon isn't right? Oshan's color green. I don't worry about I the color remember. between Oshan, but just think about it. They were happened at some point. Mm. Okay. So why? Also, the aura lady said we had a dark soul. Yeah, but was it the alchemist quest we had the blue soul? Fine, but it happened at some point. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that means anything. If it's an alchemist quest, it depends on when it was. If that was That's like a, a realm reborn alchemist mm -hmm. quest, you yeah. know it wasn't. It's not related at all. Probably. I mean, you never know. <laughs> well, you know that the Shadowbringers thing was just something they came out like they they started fleshing out at the end of Stor uh, Stormblood. This wasn't like a big planned arc. Which was very surprising to us when we f found mm -hmm. out. We read that on stream. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, right, next. When, yeah, go on. When and how do you think we'll find out our original name? Within this expansion. Oh, yeah, for sure. Really? I I th yeah. Do you think it'll be in this expansion? It would be uh -huh. weird. Cause this, oh, is, this is supposed to be the end of this story arc. This yeah, expansion. we're then going into killing, like, the final chapter will be Garamold and killing Zodiac or whatever we yeah. end up doing. It'd be weird to find out right at the end. Xenos will tell think... us. Xenos Maybe we are Xenos. Yeah. It'll be like, hey, <laughs> I know your real name for some reason. It's yeah. like Bartholomew. Oh, yeah? Ah. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Um, uh... I just don't, the only person that I know of that knows our name in the current canon would be Elidibus, mm -hmm. who's alive. Yeah. I just don't yeah. see why Elidibus would tell us at this point. I'm kind of well, confused we... as to why Emmett Selk didn't tell us before our battle. Yeah, that, that's annoying. He told us his real name. Yeah. Um, just really pissed off, I guess. Well, we've they've sort of hinted yeah. at the fact that we're, we're soon going to hear more about La Habrea possibly in this expansion. So mm. maybe something's, something's going to tell us something about what's happened. Be yeah, like an echo flashback or whatever. I remember, we're going to Oneida and an amnesis. Yeah, yeah, an yeah. We're we're probably going to see stuff from back then, so we might yeah. see, maybe we will see ourselves. They, they they've done a ourselves. they've done a really clever thing though with this is that because they can show us our character because back then we don't look like our character. It's just a hooded figure, That's right? Mm. So although it's we easy are supposed to, do. to look more unique. They are, they're all the, they've, we've talked about this before, all yeah. the hooded figures are supposed to look more unique than, yeah, instead true. of looking all that's the same true. like they do. Do you think we we'll will ever be able to see that, though? I I could see us, like, having a cutscene with, like, oh, look, we take the hood off, and I don't know. Mm -hmm. they that would be just no ourselves. head. <laughs> yeah, there's just I no think head. if we take the hood off, it will just be us. Or a tiny yeah, Goomba yeah, head, <laughs> like in the Super Mario <laughs> movie. <laughs> Uh -huh. Or at the least, like the bottom <laughs> of like our character's face, like from like how um, the Crystal X arc was. Right. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Let's see them pull them uh, Jane yeah. Merchant. Yeah. Do you what song or light motif do you think they'll use in Anida Anamnesis? Because Akdea Anida low, Amaratine's kind of theme. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Academia and Ida uses a remix of the Asian theme. Yeah. The Amorot Dungeon is a remix of the Amorot theme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to say because if it's in the past, 
it sure I think it has more connection track. with Amarot than so dungeon themes are very rarely unique in it. I know. But That's I don't feel like I what light motif the, can they I pull can't from think now? of the last dungeon that was completely unique that does not borrow either from the zone it's in or from the themes that it touches upon. It's true. Maybe it'll be more like the Tempest theme that's not Amarad. Maybe. But again, that's that's, still but that's the like... same light motif. That's the yeah. same. Yeah, it's based on the same. I mean, the theme. first part of it's a bit more bouncy. You know what? Yeah, it Fuck it. They're gonna use the bad things are happening. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna turn that into a full banger. <laughs> they uh, could go back to their roots and just have a thirty second clip and then play <laughs> Yeah. Mm. <laughs> just the generic Realm Reborn battle track oh, every yeah. time you pull something. Well, we could get a Thunder or a remix. I don't think it would be Europop, but I think we could get a Thunder <laughs> or a remix. I would want that in Europop. That would be amazing. Uh, Papaya, that would make zero point was, uh, minus wasn't. minus ten percent sense. So uh, lore breaking, even yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. <laughs> Unless it's it does make sense, and the world used to be a nightmare world where it's just papaya all the time. <laughs> yeah. the Some people about? would say that's a, like a utopia. Mm. That's why we had to summon Hydland to yeah. destroy the world. <laughs> <laughs> that was the sound that came from the in, from the from the depths of the world. It was Papaya. Um okay. Um right, let's um take the next one. Uh wait, hold on. Is this uh, this is relic, yes. Uh this one's from Chesha Saltiri from Zalera. Ooh, Zalera. Watching the latest episode about the relic weapon had me thinking about how I would design the relic step for Shadowbringers, and I came up with this idea. What if the relic stage took place in Eden? We could uncover a ruin that has a derelict light warden, and to progress to the top of this abandoned castle or ruins, we would have to hack and slash our way through many sin, <laughs> sin eaters <laughs> who are infesting the ruins. Killing them would give us small amounts of darkness, while random fates or larger... Or, while well, random fates of larger sin eaters would allow for more darkness to hasten the steps, then after enough darkness was collected, it would unlock sigils or something, blocking the next floor. I believe that you can introduce some other mechanics, including puzzle solving, jump quests, or Simon Says. Oh yeah, jump <laughs> quests. <laughs> Simon Says type things like what we saw with Suzaku or listening to the Light Warden for instructions but determining whether or not they are lies based on the UI like Divine Commandment oh. from the Rabanaster raid. They have introduced so many different types of gameplay but have never reused them. Um, also for the story, I feel like the relic should be the weapon used by the Warriors of Darkness from the story. Well, if they did that, then we would uh, definitely would just, just go back to the one. A Realm Reborn relics. Yeah, um, yeah. they would just the A Realm Reborn ones. Yeah. It's an interesting theory, but we know where the relic is. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's in Boja. Yeah, it's the Boja Citadel. Oh, I do want some, uh, Give me some jump puzzles that you need to do. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I want to get some darkness by doing <laughs> the jump puzzles. Unlike an ancient statue. Oh, uh -huh. Imagine if you had to complete the summer, summer jump puzzle. So I would I rather that than, to get to the like, next step. Mm. I'd rather that than mm. do all this light grinding in your recap. I want daily darkness scratch cards. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, I am looking forward to, to the new relics thing because I don't understand what, where they're going with it. But um, yeah, uh, like this person's idea sounds like Castle Oblivion from Kingdom Hearts. Mm, mm. <laughs> They could even add in like artificial checkpoints, like um, so you get some of the, you can only choose one of these like faster methods of getting um, whatever the, I guess darkness would be, the currency that you need to improve your relic. Mm. So like, you can do the jump puzzle, but you can only do it once, and you can only do you do it instead of some of the other options that you have to do next day like you're restricted to one each day and then there's the horrible boring thing that you can do all the time <laughs> that allows you to do yeah. it faster for the people that want to do it fast yeah i will do the jump puzzle you can only do it once rollo i will do it very fast <laughs> <laughs> i also like how we jumped on this darkness thing so quickly it's just light farming I mean, just a different no, name it's the opposite. Yeah. we're darkness farming now <laughs> <laughs> um 
Yeah, I that's chose the same, to so. avoid saying light plumbing because that is essentially what it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, we need a kettle, then. We need a kettle. Mm, a dark, dark, a dark kettle. kettle. Yeah, dark Darkness kettle. Darkness kettle. Yeah, to yeah. brew dark tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm surprised that the relic will not be involving Granolt. I am too. He serve. I thought he would serve more. But he gives yeah. you the weathered version of your relics. Mm -hmm. Why does he not enhance them? Why do we have to go to the source to Boja Citadel? Actually, maybe it, maybe it's it tied somehow. Sense now. How, maybe how? Granolt and Geralt fuse into work Cindy together Cindy. before the level sixty nine dungeon. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Mm. And then they get like Goku hair. Super yes. Saiyan hair. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you think Geralt will say if part of the relic is showing him the the weathered gear from the first? Like, how do you? Think I feel like I could have made this, but I didn't. Yeah. Because I'm a I'm a drunk. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder if he'll, <laughs> if he'll say anything about it at all. Um, mm. Well, that's it. Is that it? Yeah. No, we have, have one more. Question. We have one more. Um, oh, but, oh, also, do you think we're, we're going to... Uh, we've, I feel like we haven't talked enough about the relic theory. Mm -hmm. Are we getting a zone? Are we getting Eureka? But f for solo players... Or not? I well, think we're definitely question, getting a zone. How are mm -hmm. we going to get to Boja Citadel at least. without getting a new zone? What did you say, Mello? Mm. How are we going to get to Boja Sister without getting a new zone? Exactly. That's, but we how sad to. would it be if we just got a quest line that's like, oh, <laughs> talk to this guy about the Boja Citadel. And they're like, oh, it was very sad. And then hey, we anyway, go back. Oh, oh, oh everyone died. Right. Here's mm. some darkness for your kettle. Uh... <laughs> Thank you, you, Mister. You just go pick up darkness from from sad uh, Bosja Citadel uh, refugees. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> no, yeah, I think we'll the go. Ghost. There's no Bosja Citadel refugees. They're no, all they're all dead. dead. <laughs> I think we will get a new oh. zone, and we'll probably get a reasonable dump of Rothgar lore. Yeah, mm. it will be a nice way for them to introduce Rothgar. Uh, yeah, because it's around their world. old homeland, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, or new homeland. Apparently, yeah. it's a it's a gar no, well. It used to be just a Garlian province. Um, mm -hmm. Now, apparently, that's where the Rothgar came from, which I don't. I don't know if it's where they came from, but it is one well, of that's the places where the, they live. Yeah, um, it was a very. Imp I think it's implied that it's important to them, though, wasn't it? In the in the Gunbreaker quest. Maybe. I haven't done the Gunbreaker quest. They talk about the Bosch just hit it the Gunbreaker quest. Okay. Um, I can't remember. Yeah. Um, but I can't. Yeah, I can't remember. We'll, do on. you think we'll get multiple zones or just one? Well, it depends on what kind of one. content this is. Yeah. Because you, you're thinking but, in just an overworld area, or do you think doesn't Eureka? Need to be an overworld more area. Eureka. It could be a Eureka esque. Well, area. if it is Eureka esque, I, we're getting more. I think they're just. I, I think they're gonna go well, down that route. I want it to be overworld. I'm sick of them adding zones. I would want it to be overworld as well. Instanced. I would too. There's no reason to. But I think you're gonna have to talk to like some dude in like Garabanya or something to yeah. get. Over and I can there. even. Yeah. I can even deal with the idea that it's an overworld. There's zone where you can't fly. Fine. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But I don't want it to be a hundred and eighty minute restricted. Instant yeah. The timer is always the worst part. Yeah, about yeah. you uh, these Eureka, um, <clears throat> but I I, st I, st I still think they're gonna they're gonna do that. I wish they increased the time limit, but I think I feel they are. Well. I feel about it the same way I feel about Fates because I'm like, oh oh no, they've made this system, this Fate system, and they like it a lot. They're gonna mm. keep using that for a long time. And they sure did. Here we are today. They even put it in Eureka, everyone. <laughs> so I think it's an NM. It's different. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think I think they're definitely they're just going to perfect it. I think Eureka, and then that's what the Bosjo Citadel is going to be. I mean, this should be the equivalent of Eureka connections from the very start this time. Mm. 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 Yeah. Imagine if they just abandoned that system, like. It's just That'd a Eureka thing. Ridiculous. I, I didn't say That'd that fates are bad, chat. Worst. Didn't say fates are bad. I just said, boy, do they use fates a lot in the game. That's all I'm mm. saying. 
Um, right, okay. I if it was Pagos quality only at the start. Oh my god. And they slowly built it up to Pyros Hydratos and then <laughs> slightly better as the mm, last one. Mm, mm, shut mm, up. Mm, mm, <laughs> so stop talking. <laughs> I wouldn't mind if it's an evolving zone like um, the Dome Enclave. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be cool. Even if new sections of it unlock when it's part of the same zone. Mm. Mm. Rather than having to have four separate actual zones. Because they've start, started doing this thing where there's like walls in the overworld that you can't go through, but other people can. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So I would kind of like it if the zone ends up like that. Yeah. I, I wonder what this zone's going to look like. The boss just said it out from all the descriptions that we've gotten. A crater. Yeah, it's just a crater. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're gonna rebuild it. We're gonna fill with cement and then build it all over. I'm we're sorry, already building but, something else. I'm sorry, but yeah, first of all that, but also when you hear the description of a city just being a fucking crater, don't even try. I don't. I don't even want to think about <laughs> <laughs> trying to rebuild that. You have no. We're gonna, there's not gonna be gonna any rebuild. reference point or anything. It's just gonna be a big hole. I'm. I'm assuming that there's gonna be like a ring around where this, like, there are some buildings left. I don't know. Mm. I don't know how big this crater is, but they said it was pretty big in 1.0 at least so well it, they, they can easily be retconned yeah, just but they, like they reference the same thing in a realm reborn though with sid i believe i think the boss just said it mm. was brought up there as well uh, i want didn't some they... more sid law <clears throat> didn't they... is that what they want to yeah, do in the thought... final gunbreaker quest gods help us all oh. gods oh, help man. us may the gods we're help rebuilding us. how yeah. much rebuilding are we gonna do we're gonna rebuild we're gonna... I'm telling you, just back up the cement truck. I'm, we'll I'm still up. pro rebuilding Alamigo for the next expansion. Oh, for crying out loud. I. It's just, why would we... Why, okay, yes. I'd be why happy. would we rebuild Ishgard? Because we had a bigger connection with Ishgard. We have no connection to Alamigo. It doesn't matter if we don't. If we doesn't matter if we don't have connection. It's content. No, but that's mm. why they did Ishgard. Because everyone wanted... Uh, uh, housing that. district but, but, in Ishgar. But all the people are also been complaining that there's no city for Alamigo. So imagine if we built one. Mm -hmm. People it wanted that. City. You wanted that, didn't you? Mm hmm. But I, I don't want it anymore. I don't want to. I don't even want to think about Alamigo anymore. Do you think anymore. everyone doesn't want it anymore? Alamigo's but... dead to me. You're yeah, right. We do have to rebuild Doma Castle too. That's still fucked up and leaking water. <sighs> I'm so done with everything there. Um, really want to get we already built yeah. yeah, but we didn't do the castle. That's important. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't need the castle right now. <laughs> It'll be a big old public housing sector. Yeah. Uh, it'd also be very awkward because we would need to. We'd have like the Alamegan district where all of the story takes place, and then you would have to have a system where new players for Shadow Stormblood would be unable to go. To the city, there would be. That's if... fine. Mm. But why would it. you go to the Alamigo after the rebuild? Like in an old goods and services. Mm. Mm. Goods People and go services. to the Dome Enclave. Yeah. Fewer and fewer. Who? <laughs> fewer and fewer. <laughs> People that want to make forty thousand gil a week. Wow. <laughs> big. It mm, adds big up. Gil. It does add up. It does but add it's up. like 40,000 gil. Okay, that's In not... a week, it doesn't add up that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Big money. Just uh, like you... when you re use reduce fees, reduce Rolo, rates, it like adds up. Okay, weeks enough of that. Half a year for a million. All right, all right. It's, it saves money. You guys are just not frugal enough. <sighs> okay, next, uh, Mogmail. Uh, you don't have that rendered. Uh, it, it, it broke. Uh, this one's oh. from... Uh, it's the end of the year, guys. Everything breaks now. Uh, we're preparing for the next season. <laughs> mm. um, this one's from Manix Taruko from Cerberus. Hello, speakers. So in the live letter, we saw um, that we would be getting a second, third, if you count Ruby Extreme, trial, uh, which they will be keeping a secret for probably as long as it takes. I was thinking that with the theme of the patch, Echoes of a Fallen Star, it would be possible that at the end of the dungeon we'll find memories or data of the 13 that summoned Zodiark. And that, and that because of that, we get the chance to fight a memory slash data of La Habrea, as it would be a chance for us to find out how he was in his prime and what his true name was. That'd be a pretty That's an interesting theory. That is interesting. So we get like a Hades just with La Habrea. He does the funny I... transformation too. 
I don't think it will be a trial. I can see no. Lahabre being the final boss mm -hmm. of Anamnesis. Yeah, of the dungeon. Yeah. Mm. I don't think they would want to make a trial out of not the real one. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Do you think this? So the the ruby weapon will be like whatever, and then it'll be the new war and trial. Be what, yeah, so that's be the, the new war and trial. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. so do you think so? We're going to get ruby and then probably like emerald and diamond or something. Probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. But then, then there's a mystery one, the story one. Probably, but they didn't specify. They just there's just three trials coming uh, this patch. Mm. Uh, two of them we already know. It's yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think. I don't, they haven't mentioned anything about it, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's like a Hildebrand trial. See, that went through my mind as well. Yeah, that is true. Um, well, hopefully not. Because we haven't what seen Hildebrand not? yet. So... Well, he has all... to be here. If... if, if... Yeah, because there's this whole th event. Oh, yeah, I forgot. The way Hildebrand ended in Stormblood. Clearly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. If that has no payoff and he just ends up back where we started. Like in Uldar, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's true. I... Hmm. Yeah, okay. I think maybe it might be Hildebrand, it, yeah. I will say it is weird that they didn't mention that Hildebrand would be a thing, but it could be part of the trying to keep it a surprise because otherwise people would be more likely to connect the two yeah mm -hmm. yeah uh, there's also a secret. second second live letter coming up soon so we will probably mm -hmm. know by then it's january right that's january yeah okay i like this idea though about finding out more about la habrea from the anamnesis building or whatever mm -hmm. the hell this is yeah because i didn't actually put that together for some reason i think that's very clever yeah i think this uh... is the best way to like yeah, for us to learn about La Habrea and all of the other questions that we might have. Yeah. We're not going to get everything answered, of course. And Emmett Selk. And There's Emmett so Selk. many questions we have about him yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the silver hair, <sighs> hair that he has. Remember that? That was hair lore. Oh, yeah. Hair lore. Yeah. Maybe we'll find out. <laughs> um, In a way, the Academia and I do is a bit unusual because it has the three... Um, Asians, mm -hmm. uh, or, or whatever they were, the three, the, the, you know, the, mm -hmm. like La the originals, and, um, whatever the other two, Mitron and whatever the other one was, and it tells Emerald you what their something. speciality was. Mm -hmm. But La Habrea and Mitron, etc., are, are job titles, they're posts, they yeah. could be filled by anyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the people behind it, like Hades and whatever the other ones are called, might not have all been interested in, like, no. plant magic. Yes. So it's very weird that it's, like, Mitron section rather than whatever their real name is section. Yeah, well, but remember they live real, for maybe a long their time, real, right? Maybe their real names correspond to what the titles are now. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Might be. Maybe their names, the original convocation of the... Thirteen? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it thirteen? <laughs> yeah. And then we Yeah. What okay. I can't remember anymore. Yeah, maybe their their There's original names in evolved into the titles of the current convocation. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm looking forward to it. The artwork for that dungeon is It's cool. Well, there's Although very cool. much like we've already seen in Academia and either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it'll be, it'll I be mean, similar. I'm hoping it looks different inside. Enough. Yeah, same. Yeah. I don't <laughs> know that. Because this will be the third <clears throat> Amorotine dungeon we're getting this expansion. Yeah. Mm. All going on in Amorot. Yeah. That's all we're going to get from now on. Amorotine dungeons. That's <laughs> yeah. it. I patch. like the Moratine dungeons, but I was kind of <laughs> hoping one of them would be the deep dungeon, just because it's yeah an architecture style that we haven't gotten for the deep dungeon. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. they're such tall buildings. Yeah, just well, that's mm. true. And they have elevators. Yeah. Do we know? We don't know anything about an upcoming deep dungeon, do we? No, but it no. should no. be in this patch. If the, it would make a lot of sense. Expansion. 
it would be next patch. Sorry, it, it would be make a lot of sense for it to be in a Amarat, considering the height mm. of those buildings. I know it'll be in three, like three or something, but I'd rather it be in two. It's going I've to seen be other Alamigo. people theorize that it in Alamigo. Yeah, just for no reason. Just so they don't want to put it on the on the first. They're gonna put it on the source. That would be bizarre. I don't want that. <laughs> That's the thing I'm gonna do. Like you're going back to Alamigo. You're gonna go to the Alamigo deep dungeon. <laughs> uh, uh, has some deep caves down there. Watch out. Uh huh. Uh huh. Like the crypt. Where they buried all the kings and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah that yeah. could be interesting. I, I feel like we've explored most of them. Yeah, I feel there like was more crypts you didn't see. Yeah, there's more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yogi, but I just I don't, don't see that. <clears throat> Alamigo has two hundred levels of crypts. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're all there for you to explore. But after it changes color. And, and they shift around like they're like blocks that like move around. So that's why every room looks different. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the same. Yeah. I could. The other theories I've been. The other real theories mm. I've seen thrown around for the deep dungeon are something being in Ronka or being something related to Ronka. The works. Ronka works too. Pixies yeah. works less for me than Ronka. Ronka works I agree. Well. I, feel, I also feel like <laughs> Pixies have gotten so much already. Like they... Mm. The Fey Folk they have... Yes. Yeah, the Fey Folk, yeah. Yeah, the Pixies have the uh, map dungeons. Yeah. Yeah, so I it's think... a lot yeah, of Pixie Ronka stuff. Ronka works. Um, Amarok works. And also the Crypts of Alamigo works. Mm -hmm. Especially those, those massive Crypts. The Crypts, crypts of Alamigo, like, yeah. A huge empty so room. Some sort of time traveling crystal tower thing could be interesting too yeah you have time to go traveling to the crystal, crystal tower, tower basement what do you mean so we travel like what? like tower each room is a different like encapsulation of a time zone oh good lord that would be very that would be cool for, but uh, on high that sounds like thing. a lot of work they're not going to put yeah. into the deep dungeon system <laughs> yeah um okay i think my idea is just that, like if each floor looks like a different time location. Let's say it provides them greater variety in what each floors will look like. Mm -hmm. Why would they pick twenty five? That's such a weird number for them to work with. <laughs> but not every individual <laughs> floor. Uh -huh. No, it'd be it, 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 at the, the mm. most it would be every group of ten, but I suspect yeah. it'd be like every thirty or so. Yeah. 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 Do you I think they'll have a hundred or two hundred? Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. Do you think they're? I think they'll be a hundred. Yeah, yeah. I think they're done. No, they won't be fifty. No. I feel like they're starting to already be a bit done with the system, though. Did yeah. we ever finish Heaven really? on High? By the way, I, I, yeah, we did. Yes, we yeah, did. we did. We did. Oh, all right, we did. Man. You were there. So I was. <laughs> I kind of agree and disagree with what Mela said that they're kind of done with it. I was a little disappointed with Heaven on High because yeah. mm. there's very little variety in the dungeon, which is sort mm. of similar to Palace of the Dead, to be fair. But Palace of the Dead really had, like, at the end, it really got weird. It went crazy, didn't it? I like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. um, and it... 200 floors is... I know it's, like, most of it's at mass. I mean, it's a bit of a drag, but it's still yeah. a big challenge. And a lot of the palmenders were just kept, and we got a we got a few new ones uh, with Heaven on High, but not many. We expected. Remember when we first talked about the new deep dungeon? We were like, oh, maybe we're getting like a whole new system. We did get yeah. the the, mm. the the primal primal thing, thing, but there's well, only like three. Just more there's Which and also Odin. Just, there's four. Thing. There's technically four with Odin. Yeah, they all do the yeah. same thing though. They all do the same thing, except for Odin. I mean, it is cool to just one shot a boss with Odin. Because Odin, Odin you can, can use on a boss. boss. Yeah. 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 But still, well, you can use all of them on bosses, but Odin's the only one. Yeah, but Odin's, them. yeah, he's the kill. It is cool, but come on. Yeah. I just don't, I still don't fully understand what Primal Magicide is. No. <laughs> why it exists. No. I, don't think about don't it. Don't think about it, no. no. <laughs> I guess it can sort of justify it a bit more since it's an elegant structure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they had summoners, yeah. so it, they would. There has to be some connection between them. That's true. It taps into your memories. Mm, it mm, makes little pretty, mm, pretty rocks mm, that you can throw. Maybe. Pokemon balls. Uh, <laughs> Pokemon balls. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Uh, that wasn't what the question was about, but uh, we Thank did you. answer that as well. Um, right. Thank right, you. that's the end of the show. Thank you guys for watching. This is the last episode of 2019. So we're uh, in on a nice number, I think. 
Yeah, it's satisfying. Yeah. 175. Uh, we will be back again in 2020. That's uh, as oh. far as I know on January 4th. That's uh -huh. yes. uh, see you next decade. Yeah, <laughs> this does not mean mm -hmm. that we will be gone uh, because the channel will still will still do streams on the Twitch channel. Oh, there yeah. will be yes, there will be a one video out on uh, around after Christmas ish. So YouTube mm -hmm. viewers, there will be something on the channel while we're gone, and that is that if you're watching live remember it's not actually over there is a post show as well so don't go anywhere um <clears throat> right if you're watching on demand then then you can go now because it's over <laughs> okay uh thanks for watching remember to follow us on twitter at speakersxiv twitch.tv slash speakers of and youtube.com slash speakers exclamation discord if you're watching uh in chat if you're watching live if you're watching on demand links in the description uh, send us mugmail, speakersxiv.com slash mugmail. Do keep in mind, though, that we will not be able to read it until January 4th. So uh, don't send us any, like, time-sensitive uh, mugmails. Um, there's also the fifth speaker thing, if you want to apply to that. I think everyone has applied at this point. I'm sorry, it's a very slow process. <laughs> very slow oh. process. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, we'll see you in 2020 if you're tuning out now. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.